Mario World was 3D. It's just it uh, isn't that, goggles or anything. Good, good, good. I was gonna say, oh boy, great, another 3D. Thumb Trust thing. me, I know. As soon as I saw that, I felt I had to make sure that was clear. Okay, good. That's very. That's much better. Um, one of the games I'll say that I heard three people or so comment on was like three or four down. Pirates of New or Horizons. Like they were ultra excited that one was coming uh, because I believe that is a Windows game. And they, you know, they said very good game, very good gameplay, looks good, fun. Huh. Um, I'm just excited to see what some people, you know, say is real games coming to Linux. Yeah. Right. Even if it's a year later, it's better than not getting them at all. Year's not too bad. Yeah. Right. Could be worse. Yeah, because there are definitely game consoles where you do have to wait. A length of time for them to be available on your console right yeah so if you're a gamer and you like higher end games uh these games look like they're higher end games very cool absolutely um okay the next one uh these are a little bit out of order because it's 11 at night and i'm sleepy um i'm not really sleepy I'm going to be up till three. Um, <laughs> uh, Ubuntu Unity has lenses. If you watch the mobile, you'll see some of those things are there too. You click the main Windows button or the main icon, and you get your list that's searchable. And at the bottom, you have buttons. Each one of those buttons is a lens. You can click a button and only look at your contacts, for instance, in the phone interface. And then I can start typing pod nuts and I'll see Steve's email there. Well, uh, a, um, another lens that now you can get, it has the availability to put 4,000 recipes right there built into your operating system. Muffins. So yeah, this could be the perfect interface for that tablet that you then want to be in your kitchen. Right. Just saying. I Maybe see not how desk. I see how Unity is definitely. Uh, this is like a huge application to that. I mean, you could really see where they're going with Unity, what they were thinking with. Yeah, and I do like the logo. It's just an orange circle with a fork. <laughs> That's awesome. Makes sense. So yeah, I mean, basically, what it is basically like in here, you hit the start menu, you hit the lens, and then you want to cook chicken tonight. You type chicken. And then it will list in there all of the recipes, barbecue chicken, barbecue chicken. Yeah. See, you're about as, <laughs> that's what I cook. One, yeah. one, one word foods. There's too many words in the title. I don't know how to make it. I will say it almost scares me when I have to stop and put the syllables in the right order of a recipe. <laughs> I, I just pass and I say, hey, um, this looks interesting. <laughs> right. Not for me. <laughs> okay. Um, next link. I, this is the still the thing, Steve. I don't know how to think about it. They just did a feature freeze on Ubuntu 12.04, which is going to come out, I think, late April. I didn't look at the schedule yet. Okay. Typically, when they do the feature freeze a week later or so, I install it because I know. This is where the hard smashing out of bugs starts to happen. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to download it here in like a week or so and put it on a box. But there's the new feature called HUD, which to any gamer instantly rings a bell. Heads up display. Mm -hmm. um, this apparently is like um, Blender has had this, I think, uh, Clot 2 from GNU World Order said. Um where in Blender, you would hit a key and then start to type something. And anywhere it would be like in your drop down menus, file, edit, print, tools, help, you would just start typing. And then, bam, you could just, hit, you know, hit it and go. You didn't okay. have to go to the menu, you didn't have to hit Alt and S. So, in concept, sounds interesting. Don't know how it is in reality. I will soon, but. You know, we we'll have to just try it. So well, in the Unity search bar, you start typing something, and it'll give you all the locations where it is. 
Well, okay, that's the thing. This is a cross application and OS tool. So if you just hit your home button and start typing kind of thing, you can perform web searches. You can look in your web history. You can look at applications. You can look at files, all different things. But if you have, let's say, Firefox open and you start typing OPT, options will be there for preferences. Okay. Whatever it is. Or, you know, PRI print will be there. It will actually interact with your menus there as well. Well, one of the biggest things I despise about Unity whenever I tried it was I couldn't get 3D running on all of my computers. I got it running on like one. <laughs> and a lot of the features that people touted were only in Unity 3D, not Unity 2D. And I could get 2D to load on everything. It was 2D. Well, the HUD is now coming to the 2D interface, which means us people with blacklisted video cards or old video cards will also be able to use this feature. Nice. That's, yeah. that, that's nice of them. So I, I, I'll say that alone makes me feel better about it. Um, now I just got to download it and play with it. I think it's one of those things, if you're at all accustomed to the application, this could severely speed up your workflow. Totally. If this is a brand new application, it might be a piece of poo would really make you mad. <laughs> Let me know how you like it. Definitely. I'll definitely re re report back on that. Um, the next one is another game. Okay. This is a game called Core Breach. Um, Ubuntu, OMG, Ubuntu.co.uk. They basically question whether or not this is the best racing game on Ooh, Linux. Ooh, I like racing games. I know, but you know how I feel about somebody calling something the best, Steve. Yeah. Full of poo. Okay, there is no best. Because what if your racing game, you like motorcycles with lots of jumps? Then this wouldn't be the best. You know, this is a space racer, similar S to F-Zero. Right. Um... It definitely looks like it runs uncommonly quick. The graphics look, the only way I can explain them is if you were used to Xbox 360 and PS3 type graphics, and then you loaded Wind Waker for any um, GameCube. <laughs> um, You're right. It wasn't that the graphics were bad. It's just that they were different. And if you first look at this game, you'll think the graphics are horrible. And then as you look at it, you'll notice there are things going on in the graphics that actually make it sharp. So I encourage people, you know, check out the video, see if this is the kind of game you're interested in. If it is, I encourage you to check it out. I am a fan of racers. And if you look at the track uh, around a minute 19 mark, they back out. And they show you the whole track from afar. I, oh, I love the yeah. Those three D back pulling pulling back views of the track look great. They look crazy. Huh. You know, this game looks very fast. It's like very um, burnout ish. Right. Yeah. They also compared it to the jet ski game, which I don't necessarily agree with. To be honest, one game I might compare it to was the racing game. That Timster pulled up for Android Jet Car. Yeah. That, yep. Uh, just a little bit like that one. Right. I uh, definitely think it's cool. Yeah, very cool. I got to check that one out. Okay. Um, This next one, I got to mention, I did literally download it and install it. But I did that tonight. Um, uh, A guy who's been in contact with me off and on for years, once in a while, asked me a question. Once in a while, he'll shoot me a cool link um, named Bob asked me how to get this installed and running on his computer, and it's called Nightingale. Now, I'm almost confused. What it looks like is, okay, I mentioned um, Songbird before. Yeah. I really liked, there were things about Songbird I really liked, and it was ultra iTunes-esque, where if somebody just used iTunes to play their local media kind of thing 
and uh, subscribe to podcasts, Songbird was a really acceptable replacement. Well, it looks like when they at first announced Songbird was killed for Lennox, these people started up. I never heard of them until literally a couple days ago. Now, Songbird says they're coming back to Lennox, and these people are out for Lennox. These are the ones I would much rather use because they didn't leave me high and dry. And I'll say, really sharp, really clean, very iTunes-esque in the color patterns and the buttons. And now if you download this, this is a OS independent thing. You download the tar.gzip, you extract it, then you go in the folder and there's a file called nightingale-bin. That's a binary file, like in Windows at EXE. Okay. You just double click it, wait a couple seconds, you're off to the races. It's running. Gotcha. There's no real install to speak of, I'll say. I see. It looks, yeah, it looks like iTunes. It looks great. Yeah. And it does have add on functionality like Firefox and like Songbird. Sweet. Um, it looks like uh, I don't see a count of add ons or how many add ons, but it looks like they might only have. 30 or so add-ons right now, but hopefully they'll come out with more. Okay. Oh, and a couple other add-ons that people might like. Uh, direct tune, focus track, last, F last FM, media flow, shout cast. So, you know. It's pretty neat. Like so it's like app in apps inside of the app. Exactly. That's what and Spotify's doing. That. Spotify's doing that these days. Right. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of that framework. Yeah, me too. Okay, um, next link, Steve. <coughs> Sorry. I almost hate these things because most of the time they're friggin' lies. Okay. But, but I wouldn't bring it up. Um, over at InfoWorld, which I haven't been on InfoWorld, oh my lord, since like 98. <laughs> and hello, buyer. Thank you for coming out to the live show. I know you had to work today. Um, okay. And oh yeah. Oh yeah. Steve C asked if your real name was buyer, your real first name was buyer to which I said, of course it is. I, I did know. ask. And then you asked me, what did he buy? And I know <laughs> he buys cold, refreshing beer because of pod brewers, but I don't know about anything else. <laughs> um, I'll get the okay. scoop from buyer. I've never been formally introduced to buyer, by the way. So nice to meet you, buyer. Steve buyer. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, Okay. Now, this is an uh, article over at InfoWorld. Seven new features in Ubuntu 12.04 Precise Pangolin. Shouldn't it be called Penguin first off? <laughs> I don't know. Call me crazy. Did you look up Pangolin? No, because I don't care. It's not Penguin. And they made me mad because their H release wasn't Hungry Hungry Hippos, or Hungry Hippos which it should have been. <laughs> Precise pangolin. What was the H release? Heron? Uh yes, Hardy Heron. Yeah. I don't know what a heron is either. I guess it's a bird. <laughs> oh my lord, pangolin's ugly. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I gotta look it up too. It's like almost anteater esque looking. Pangolin. Borneo. Wow, Borneo. yeah, that's a that ain't that ain't a pretty thing. Nope. Not at all. Pretty cool, but just not not really cute. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, there's seven features. Not all of them are even features. Okay. Number one, the HUD display. We just talked about that. Number two, Unity tweaks. Okay. Yes, that is. Click pad support. What's a click pad? <laughs> no, seriously. Do you know what a click pad is? Sports for click pads, which are checked. No, I didn't know. I I'll... didn't want you to read it. That's what I do. I read things. I, I well, actually, yes. I don't know what a click pad is, and I didn't read it yet. What the heck is it? The only thing I can think is it's like the Apple Magic Pad or and like on certain touch books, you have the buttons integrated into the pad itself. Okay, it is. You're right. Because it says it's track pads on which the physical button is integrated into the trackpad surface. Yeah, that's new. I'm... Okay, number four, <laughs> power savings power savings 
power savings. Number five. 